Recording in progress. There we go. Okay, so let's get started with the notes. Uh, so we're covering the first four section of chapter one. After I finish this, you guys can start the homework. My hope is that you can finish all the homework today in class. That'd be my hope. Then we have nothing to do over the weekend. And just enjoy the weekend. Try to get your bearings straight. Most likely we'll have some homework to do next week on the weeknights. But my hope is we can just get everything done in our 75 minutes. And you guys can just have one less thing to worry about over the weekends. I'm sure you're going to have homework for other classes, right? All right. And I'm going to kind of just ask you guys to contribute. Uh, I'll call on names because I'm still trying to remember names, stuff like that. And if I just don't know your name, just remind me. <laughs> it's my bad. Uh, so we're going to cover four sections again. So 1.1 is on properties of real numbers. You see that's highlighted here in yellow. We're going to go over all this stuff here and I'll kind of like add some color. Feel free to annotate these notes. I mean, a lot of these are already filled out, but some of them actually have questions that we have to complete. So, you know, obviously you're going to want to fill that out too. Now, I'm not collecting these notes, just so you know, I don't collect notes. So these are for you to keep. Um, homeworks, um, I'm still deciding how I want to go about homeworks. Um, I will look at it, but I'm, not, I'm most likely I'm just going to give you full credit for the homework as long as you do it. Um, I'll probably do some sort of a homework check-in starting next week. I'll share details about that later. But for now, just don't worry about um, me collecting notes. 1.2 will be on simplifying and evaluating algebraic expressions. As you see there in those nice colors, PEMDAS, that we're going to cover that. Um, 1.3 is on solving equations, linear equations, very basic equations, just a single variable. We're going to do that. We'll also do a little bit of conversions too, which I know could be a little funky sometimes, but we'll do that. And then um, the last section we'll do today is rewriting formulas. We have to isolate a variable in, in an equation. So these are all just skills that should be pretty solid from Algebra 1. We might be a little rusty. It's been a few months since you guys have done some math. In the case of last year, it was like some people hadn't done math in eight months, or some guys came from Zoom school, <laughs> which was pretty awful. So uh, my hope is you guys are not as rusty as the kids last year. Last year was pretty brutal. Anyway, properties of real numbers. Um, when you hear the word real number, it's basically just any number you can think of, any number that is real. There is be something called imaginary numbers, which we won't do until later in the fall, but real numbers is just any number you could think of. Like you see here, I have like 12.38, negative 0.865, three fourths, pi, which is 3.14 and a bunch of other random digits, uh, 198. So real numbers is kind of like the top of the food chain. Think of it like that. It's like the king of all numbers. It covers everything. It's, it's like this giant cloud that encompasses pretty much any number you can think of. And then below that, there are subsets. So I like to think of it as like this. Real numbers. And then they branch off. Um... We have something called rational numbers and irrational. So what happens is that the real numbers are top of the food chain and they branch off into two subsets, rational and irrational. Now, rational numbers, which, does anyone know what that is, what the rational number is? Like, what? That, that, what that would be defined as? Dec decimal or fraction. Yes, uh, more specifically, um, it's a ratio of two integers. That's why it's called rational. Ratio, rational, kind of a play on words there. So it's a ratio of two integers. So for example, 0. 0.5, what of two integers, um, what, what fraction can I make with 0. 0.5? Zero and one. No, 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 no uh, point 0.5. But what, what would be the fraction that would go oh, with it? Oh, one half. One half, right? What about point 0.3 repeating? What would that fraction be? One third. Uh, what about point 0.25? Can I write that as a fraction of two numbers? One fourth or 25 out of 100? How about point 0.263? Sure. 263 over 1,000. So anything that, um, I remember your name again? Patrick. Patrick, yes, Patrick. So, and, so basically, Patrick was on the right track when he said decimal or fraction. It's a ratio of two integers or terminating. Let me um, write that a little more nicely. You know, let me write this as a text box. That'll be better. So, there's a text box right here. 
a rational number is a ratio of two integers or can be thought of as a number with a terminating or repeating decimal. And let me resize that just a little bit. So hope you guys can see that. So again, that's a reference the ratio of two integers or can be thought of as a number with a terminate or repeating decimal. So 0.3 repeating, that's a rational number because I can rise one third. 0.6 repeating, I can rise as two thirds. 0.236, I can rise two and thirty six over a thousand. Um, because 0.236 terminates, right? It doesn't keep going. The problem is that when you have irrational numbers like pi, does pi ever end? No. Is there any rhyme or reason to it? No. <laughs> so people can memorize pi, and that's really the best thing you could do. There's no rhyme or reason why pi is what it is. It's just kind of this random digits that follow, or root two. Uh, in fact, actually, let me do this for you guys. Let me pull up my um, graphing calculator. You don't need a graphing calculator anytime soon, but Definitely by the time we get to chapter three, I'd say by the end of next week, make sure you have a graphing calculator. That would be important. Um, hold on a sec here. Let's go here, math departments. There we go. So this cool little app I got that um, emulates the TI-84 calculator. So you can see, see exactly what I'm doing. Finish, there we go. Okay. So if you guys can see that just fine. So if, let me go ahead and um, clear my work. So if I type in pi, do you see any rhyme or reason? To, no, right? Or if I do root two, the square of a non-perfect square? Hey, Kai, what's up? Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, so you guys, yeah? Bring your laptop. Okay. It'll be like a couple minutes. Okay, cool. Two minutes. No. <laughs> Take your time. All right. But like, look at root two. I don't see any kind of repetition or pattern to that, right? So anyway. Okay. And we're all listening. <laughs> okay. Let's keep moving here. Uh, sorry, I got just so many things open here. All right. So again, that's what are um, rational and irrational. So irrational... There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Rational has a reference to patterns. Okay. After we, I do the breakdown, let me write the breakdown again. And let me go to my PDF. There we go. All right. So again, real numbers, top of the food chain. Then it splits off the rational and irrational. So I'm just copying what I wrote earlier. Now, the rational actually breaks down even further. Integers. And whole numbers. Whole numbers is kind of like the bottom of the food chain. That's like at the bottom. And what I mean by that? Well, integers are like whole numbers, but they'd be positive or negative, right? Also, it includes zero. <laughs> integers are like this. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And of course it goes on forever, right? So those are considered integers, right? They can have negative numbers, positive numbers of zero. Whole numbers have no negatives. They start at zero and then they, they count up. That's all. So, whole, so you can think of, um, the integers include the whole numbers, but have more. But rational include the integers, they have more. The real numbers include rational numbers, and they have more. So the real numbers encompass this, this encompasses this, and this encompasses this. So it's kind of like this, um, they're kind of like subsets. Um, questions so far? No? Uh, the schematic down below, I think, will help you guys visualize this a little better. Yeah, here we go. That's actually a really good visual. I like that. Oh, God bless you. All right. I guess more of like Venn diagrams. Yeah, it's kind of like a Venn diagram. Like, I mean, it's kind of like you have the real numbers, 
this is like giant circle, right? And then you have like the rational numbers inside that circle. And then you have like the integers inside that and so forth. Think of it this way, like we're in the state of California. California's got a bunch of counties. County's got a bunch of cities, right? So like we're in California. What's our county? San Mateo. What city are we in right now? Atherton. So you think of it like that, we have California. That's like the real numbers. Actually, no, let's go even bigger. United States of America. That's like the real numbers. Then California is like the rational numbers. San Mateo County is like the um, integers. And then absent is like the um, whole numbers. You feel like that. They're all like within each other. Or it's kind of like, the, I used to have, oh, right here. You guys know what this is? Yes. All ahead. It's not bobblehead. It's not Blisco doll, yeah. Um, it's also a, a cheater in baseball, Barry Bonds. Um, but anyway, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a very sharp sound. There we go. So then you got like this guy. Okay, I, actually, I took it back to my my kids took it and then I took it from them. So, so you can't, and I don't know if there's anyone inside this guy. Yeah. So anyway, it's kind of like that. Like this is like, this is like the real numbers. Then we bond with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, this is like the rational numbers. And this is like the integers. And if there was another ball inside, that'd be like the whole numbers. So hope that helps. Okay. I got this at a Giants game many years ago when Jeff Bond was still the Giants. So. Anyway, they did much better without it. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Um, now, things that are not real numbers, we'll talk about. We'll talk about imaginary numbers. You guys have, I think you guys were taught, like, you can't square root negative numbers. Like, that's, that's a really bad thing. Actually, you could. You call it an imaginary number. We'll, we'll have that discussion in Chapter 4. I probably won't be here. I'll be on, on leave during that time. Whoever is subbing, we'll talk about that with you guys. But that's another discussion we'll have down the road. That's actually chapter four stuff, just so you know. Infinity is a number that just, it's like this abstract idea. Like infinity is just a number that goes on forever. You know, we, we can count to as much as we want, right? We can count to a billion, to two billion, to three billion, to four billion. So infinity is just kind of like this never ending number that's kind of hard to fathom. That's not real, also, because I don't know. I don't know what infinity really would be. Um, you could really spend a lot of time and write PhD theses on this stuff. But we're just gonna keep moving. Let's go. Let's do stuff a little more practical. Stuff that I want you guys to be very well versed in. I want to make sure that you guys can at least estimate certain numbers without using a calculator. So let's look at root three, for example. I know root three is between one and two. How do I know that? How do I know root three is between one and two? Go ahead, Jay. I I actually I have no idea, but I if I were to like. Well, square root of what number is it? The square root of what number? Good. A square root of what number gets you one? One. No one. You got. It. You got. It. You got. It. You're just mixing up your numbers. You got it. So uh, let me um, let me let me write down what I just uh, shared with AJ. Would you guys agree this is true? That root one is less than root three, and root three is less than root four. And then what's root four? Two. And what's root one? Four. So bottom line is that root three is probably going to be right over here. I probably go with C, that one, because C is between one and two. Um, Probably not quite B, definitely not D or A, but C seems to be the most reasonable, I would say. Root three, I think, is roughly um, 1.7 something, but as long as you know it's between two whole numbers or two integers, you're cool. How about negative five sevenths? Which letter would you go for negative five sevenths? Alex, you said B? Yep, uh, I agree. B would make more sense. C is probably like negative 0.1. B seems a little more reasonable. I would say it's like roughly negative 0.8 something. I think I'm a little off. I think it's negative like 0.7 something. But I'll go with B. So this is all just number sense, right? Before we get too deep into algebra, you want to make sure you're, you're comfortable with numbers, right? This is what this section is all about. And you'll have a chance to do similar stuff in the homework. All right, one more before we do PEMDAS. PEMDAS is a big deal. Um,
So what happens when you, when you have something raised to the third power? What does that imply? Times those three times. Times those three times, exactly. So what's that going to be? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like B, because you, you, it's going to be negative, obviously, right? Negative one. Yeah, because you have multiplying three negatives. Also, the fact that um, it's close to zero, but to the left of zero, right? Um, it's you'll you'll want to eventually be good at converting. I know in the middle school you probably had this ad, ad nauseum where you had to convert decimals and fractions and go back and forth, be fluid at that. It is good to know one eighth is point one two five. I mean, I wouldn't expect you know, like one seventh or one eleventh. Those are really weird fractions, but this is a, a good one to know. So now one eighth, yeah. As I'll go B, totally. Okay. Questions on 1.1? Yeah, that's like totally, we're moving fast. So um, I'll, I'll wait for you guys to copy. And if I go too fast, please let, if I need to pump the brakes a little bit, please let me know. Uh, I'm still trying to kind of calibrate my pacing because, um, you know, I haven't done classroom. I, I always do like some work over the summer, but, you know, it's, it's been a couple months for me too. Um, okay, 1.2. Kind of There's a mnemonic or kind of like a little, not, not a nursery, well, kind of. I don't know if it rhymes, but like a little like saying that people um, use to help remember. Do you guys know what the saying is for this? Please. Excuse. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, pink elephants, what? May destroy a school. I like that. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, please. <laughs> I don't know how this came about, but please excuse. It's one of those things that like, I mean, I teach math. I've done math like every day for pretty much my whole life because I got my degrees in STEM and, you know, I started tutoring when I was in my 20s and now I'm in my mid 40s. But my friends who are not math teachers, so my friends are actually not even STEM, um, they still know this stuff. So it's one of those things you just don't forget. Um, what this means is that there's a hierarchy of um, operations. When you see a bunch of wacky uh, operations, you got to follow this hierarchy. So you got to do the parentheses first, the exponents, multiplication too. Multiple divisions are actually interchangeable, but when you see them both in the same column, then you go from left to right. Not exponents, division, subtraction, but they're also interchangeable. So if you see both division, subtraction, the same column, you go from left to right. Uh, sometimes I find it's amusing. Um, I know I know you guys are probably are not on Facebook, but. Facebook's more for my generation, but um, you know, sometimes someone will put like a random problem and they'll say solve it, and I'll look at the answers. I just kind of just laugh. It's like, and they seem so convinced. I'm like, dude, no, you're wrong. And they seem so convinced, like, no, I'll explain why you're wrong. <laughs> so don't be one of those people. Let's get let's get this right. <laughs> um, first of all, exponents. You guys know how exponents work? Uh, and make sure you guys are, um, the um, the way you name stuff. I'm gonna be very very picky about it. So this whole thing here, just so you know. This whole embodiment is called a power. And we say two to the fourth power. However, if you break it down even more, the two is called the base. Kind of makes sense because it's on the bottom, right? It's not the basement, it's not the foundation. And the four is higher up. So we call that exponent, right? So the four is called the exponent, so the two is called the base. But the whole thing. Is called a power. So two and the four will be called power. And what does it mean? It means you take the base and you multiply that the number of times. So you multiply two four times. And that's not hard to get 16. Um, so that should be pretty pretty standard. It's the things you've seen many times. This is very important. I'm going to say don't mix this up. So these are actually two totally different things. So we don't realize that. These are two totally different things. For example, if I do this in the calculator, where did my calculator go? Had it here. That is weird. I must have closed down accidentally. Okay. Okay, so if I do this in the calculator, let me go ahead and clear. If I do negative two raised to the four power, it's going to say this. But if I do this, the calculator, just so you know, 
only knows what we're of operations. Doesn't know what you want. You're the control calculator. Calculator is kind of sort of just this dumb entity, just does something, doesn't really think for itself. Why are these different? What's happening here? Lizzie, right? Oh, oh, sorry, Elizabeth, sorry. Um, okay, which was Lizzie? Go, um, Lizzie, right? Lizzie. Yeah, Lizzie and Elizabeth, you did. Sorry. The difference in the parentheses, or in the top one, the negative is added after, so you just do two, but in the bottom, you multiply negative. Yes, good. Perfect. So let me read through what Elizabeth said. Um, so here's, here's the, it's a very subtle but very important difference. This, without realizing it, and I know you meant uh, negative one times, I know you said negative one add, but there's negative one included. I, I think that's what you meant. So it's negative one times two times two times two times two. Whereas this guy is negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. The second one's encapsulated. The negative two is encapsulated in the parentheses. This one that is not encapsulated. Only that two gets rid of that four bar because it's kind of awesome. It's like saying. Let me actually rewrite that and I'll do that. It's like saying this. It's like saying they one times two raised to the four power. How come they didn't do that? Because mathematicians are lazy. I'll, I'll tell you, we are super lazy. We like to write things as quickly as possible. But we're, we were not writers. But <laughs> negative one times two raised to the four power. That's what it means. Negative one times two raised to the four power. So you got to do, and then of course, what comes first? Does x bell come first? Or does multiplication come first? M does. Which one comes first, the E or the M? E, e, then the M. Exactly. So it's exponent, then multiply. However, this one is parentheses, then exponent, right? Because you got stuff with parentheses. So if there's any other stuff only side of parentheses, you got to address that. Then you do the exponent, and you're good. And of course, the parentheses is just negative two, right? Okay. Now let's do some uh, real stuff here. See if you guys are rock stars at this. Um, okay. Do you see a parentheses? Yep. So P, check. So now we got to take care of everything inside the P. Do you see any exponents? Nope. nope don't worry about it. Okay. Do you see multiplication? Yeah. Yes. You bet. I got to do that first. That would. So what I just did is I took care of this part. Oop. So I took care of that first. I know it's a little repetitive to repeat all sort of stuff, but I just wanted to show you for our side, I'm going to three times two first, which is this. Okay, now inside the parentheses, do I have any division? No, so I don't have a D. Do I have any addition or subtraction? Mm -hmm. I do. So I got to address that also. Now I'm going to make that um, a plus because you're minusing a negative. And I'm just going to go from left to right. If I go from left to right, I get negative 17 plus 5 plus 1 plus 6. Oh. So negative 17 plus five plus one plus six and then at that point shouldn't be that hard that should be negative 12 plus seven and then negative um eight divided by negative five is that right no negative five divided by negative five and then i get one she get one for that If you were to type in the calculator, it should say one. You did it correctly. So again, parentheses, address the parentheses, but multiplication of four digits and subtraction. Do that. You have the subtraction, take care of all that, and you have negative. Okay, that's a very prototypical PEMDAS problem. Um, let's do some more. Let's look at um, this one here. Now, you have a bunch of letters here, and they told the letters equal, right? So, substitute, just do it. Negative three, 
divided by oh, three parentheses. Now I'm going to put one plus negative four times negative six plus five minus negative six plus one double parentheses. Um, I'm going to have you guys try it. I'll give you guys a moment to do that. And tell me what you guys think. So go ahead and try it on your own. Check with your table mates, see if you guys got, got it. I'm going to do it in my head, which I shouldn't do, but we'll see if I get it. Okay. I think I got it, but we'll see. I could be wrong. Hopefully we get a consensus. If we don't, then we'll have to break this down a little further. I'm going to do it again in my head. You guys don't recommend doing your head. Okay. Pretty sure I got it. No one want to share? Go ahead, Joe. Um, close. I got negative 110. Did you have a 30 somewhere along the way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you had negative 3 divided by 30. So you just mix them up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, did anyone else get negative 110? So let me rewrite it. So you have negative three divided by three. And then what do we got inside this parentheses here? We got one plus four, because you're gonna have negative one here, but times negative four is four. And then we have over here. Oh, are you getting zero? That's because you're, you're mixing up the negatives. What's negative six plus one, negative five? But you're minusing a negative. Positive. Then you got negative three divided by three times ten. Oh, wait one sec. You know what, AJ? Did you say negative ten? I agree with you. I'm wrong. So AJ, AJ beat the teacher. Good work. It's actually negative ten. I was wrong. Why was I, what did I do wrong? I didn't go from left to right. That was my fault. So the answer should be negative 10, not negative 110. Thank you, AJ. Uh, yeah, because what's happening here is that you got to take care of the parentheses, right? Which I, I did. I got 10. However, when you have multiplication division, you got to go from left to right. So that's got to be negative 1 times 10, so it's negative 10. So first day, made a mistake. I'm human. But that should be negative 10. And you can always plug this in the calculator. I'll, I'll do it right now. Uh, let me erase the other stuff because it's a little distracting. Yeah, if I were to do this, um, let's turn this guy on. So I did negative three divided by parentheses. Actually, I'll do a three here then parentheses, and then do one plus negative four, parentheses, negative six plus five, parentheses, minus parentheses, negative six plus one, parentheses, parentheses. Yep, you get negative 10. Those are good. Yeah. Okay, so we got... Um... Obviously, you have a new curve. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so you got eight here, right? That's fine. You got C, which is negative four. You got D plus five, which is negative plus five. So you got negative four times negative one, which is four. Then over here, you get negative six plus one, which is negative five. You're going to do minus negative five, which is positive five. I think multiplied. The negative four is multiplied by negative five. Because when you're starting the parentheses, you got because you got you got instead of parentheses here, so you gotta address this before you do this. So, yeah, okay. Well, let's try this again. Let's keep moving, and we'll move on to one three. And what time do we get up by? Eleven fifteen. I think it's eleven ten. Okay, cool. And then we have lunch after that. Cool. So I'm getting hungry. All right, let's keep moving here. Um. All right, this one. 
So be careful, negative four minus negative four minus negative four times negative four. Okay. Uh, by the way, be OCD of your friends. It's totally cool. Be obsessive about it. Um, very good habit to have. I, I say it's kind of a blessing and a curse. Uh, any of you guys ever like went up doing like any data work, like when you take like science class and use an Excel spreadsheet and you're putting all these in formulas, you're going to have to use a whole bunch of parentheses. Um, actually, we're going to be doing, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing a uh, computer science project uh, that will involve programming the calculator. It's going to happen in a couple of weeks. You can be very, very obsessed with the parentheses. So negative four times negative four, that's 16. And then negative four plus four, because that becomes plus plus, right? What do you get um, as your final answer for this? Perfect, thank you. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, last one. Can we question on this one? And then that's negative that's positive 16. So you have negative 4 squares and minus 16. So you have negative 4 plus 4 minus 16. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving. Um, this one is like combining like terms. We're going to cover that um, sometime down the road. But you first distribute. It's combined like terms and distribution. Which kind of follows or of operations because you got to respect the or of operation when you combine like terms. So if I distribute, what do you get when you distribute? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you get 12, um, 8x minus 18. Outstanding. Yep. That's all. Okay. And that's a skill that you want to be well versed in when you start solving equations. You don't want this. We don't want these things to be issues. So we want to make sure if you're having any issues, talk to me. We'll nip in the bud because you're going to have to be comfortable with distributing in final terms when you solve equations, which we're going to do in 1.3. So this is stuff that you guys do over several weeks in Algebra 1. We're just moving right past it. Just a review. Um, but then we'll pump the brakes when we get to um, later chapters. Okay. Questions? No? Okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, I'm going to leave this um, display in case you guys are still coughing or simmering over it. Okay. So let's look at 1.3 now. 1.3 is on solving equations. Um, that just means isolating a variable, right? Solving equations is one of the biggest things you do in any math class, right? A lot of times we're going to be uh, we're doing with word problems. You have a variable you have to isolate. That's just the essence of equations. Um, so let's look at this one here. So again, the, the key idea is you want to isolate a variable. Well, let's start with this guy here. What should I and this and this and by the way, there are several paths. You don't. There's not just one way. It's like, for example, if I want to get to San Francisco, I could take Highway 280 or 101. First, I take 280. I hate 101. Or you can take the train, right? Um, or if you want, you can go down to San Jose, take uh, you know 680 to 880, and then cross the Bay Bridge from the other direction. That'd be crazy, but you could do that too. Um, but let's let's try to be efficient here. What, what do you think would be an efficient way for doing this problem? What should I do as my first step? I like this tube. That's a good one. So negative 12 R plus 24 equals negative 36. Remember your name again? Is it um is that Charlie? Okay. So negative 12 R plus 24 equals negative 36. All I do is I distribute it. By the way, please be careful about the negatives. I've seen students, you know, we're human. I, I made a mistake early semester. I just for looks. But um, make sure when you do negative three times negative eight, you make it positive. I've seen some students have some two times negative 24. So please be mindful about that. Um, well, negative 12R equals negative 60 
And um, don't worry, I'll let you use a calculator if you feel like some of the mental math might be a little hard in your head. I'm totally cool if you have to use a calculator for some of this stuff. Um, so if you, if you have a hard time doing the arithmetic in your head, use a calculator, it's totally fine. So if you do subtract 24, and why did I subtract 24, by the way? Why did I mean 24? I moved my move um, from left to right. Why did I do negative 24? Okay. Yeah, because you got to do the opposite. Okay, so R5. R5. Okay. Okay, R5. Let's look at seven. Wait, no, sorry, it's not number seven. Sorry, let's look at this next problem. Um, how would I go about the next problem on the bottom right of this page? Go, Lizzie. So, so, or, 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 well, sorry, you can do the next one, James. Go, Lizzie. The next one on, the, on the, this one here. I like it. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Good. Excellent. That's 28. So whenever you see a fraction, where is the denominator? I strongly, strongly suggest get rid of the fraction and paste that. Fractions can be very messy. So if you see a fraction, you see a single term down below. So if you multiply by that term, it will cancel out, right? So multiply by five, that cancels. So remember the guys on the other side as well. It's all fair. It's all about fair treatment. And that's really hard to read. So let me let me clear this. Let me do it again. So you see what I just did there? The fives cancel. So I got 35 equals W plus seven. W has got to be 28. I'm not being, um, I know in algebra one um, or in, in middle school, sometimes the, the, you, you show this step. And we, and of course, of course, in algebra one class, you want to be very deliberate and showing all the steps. I mean, I don't want you just show, writing the answer. I do want you to show worth, but you don't have to be as detailed for something like this because we're doing more advanced stuff down the road. But this is what I did, obviously. So kind of stuff. We have 28. Okay. So Amy, on, the, on this page, we're okay? Cool. All right. Let's keep the train moving. All right, and just so I pace things appropriately, okay. All right, let's keep let's keep the train moving here. Um, well, oh, are those the same problem? Oh, that's weak. Okay, I didn't write this by the way. I borrowed from another teacher, so that was not my fault. Okay. All right, let's try these uh, next two here. Um, I probably would do something called cross multiply. You have that luxury. If you have exactly one fraction of these, I just said we're exact. You have exactly one fraction of these, so you have the luxury of multiplying this, to this, and this, and this. The reason we have that luxury is because if I kind of go about a little more roundabout way, you're doing that, which now becomes negative nine times p plus eight, and this becomes eighteen times p plus six. You have that luxury because you can multiply both sides by one of the denominators. And then, but because I do that over here, I had to do it over here as well. The one important thing divided by one is itself. So don't worry about it. What's the point? How would it have to be negative 9 times 8 plus 6? Because that's what you're doing. I'm done yet. I could go. That's my first step. Like the negative. Oh, I didn't really see this. Oh, okay. Um, you, you could do it right away if you wanted to. Um, so Elizabeth asked a great question. Um, I could have done this first. So you're saying this, right? Oh. Okay, I made a my second mistake today. Wipe away from your memory what I just did. I now understand. Okay, sorry, Elizabeth, that's my fault. Okay, wipe away. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, 
We're going to keep running told running tab mistakes I make. My apologies. Um, these cancel. So you just get negative six times P plus six. My apologies. No wonder you're confused because I made a really big error. My apologies. Of course, negative three cancels, right? And then when I distribute, I get this. Is that better now? Yes. Okay, cool. No, 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 because it cancels, right? Okay, now I feel better. I feel so much better about this. Um, you guys should be getting um, negative 12. Yeah. Negative 12. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Can't wait to do that. My apologies. Wow. Can't believe I made such a big mistake like that. Okay. We're okay with that now? We're cool. Yeah. My apologies. All right. So you're next one. Um, okay, that one's easy. Let's not make let's not make the same mistake I did. Um, okay, we'll keep the train moving here. All right, I know, terribly exciting stuff. <laughs> not to worry about it. It's not my favorite. We'll, we'll do more cool stuff down the road. I'm tired too. All right, can't wait for the weekend. Okay, no worries. All right, add three to both sides. Strong, especially add three to both sides because. The whole point, right, is to get x by itself. What's connected to x here? The one fourth and the negative three. The one, the one fourth is going to be multiplied by x. Negative three is going to be subtracted from both sides, right? It's you almost know? like you're deconstructing the equation, and you're going, you're trying to do like the reverse of the right? So you want to add the three, so that way you can go to get one fourth x isolated. And you're almost there. You're almost there. What is x going to equal now? We use your final step here. Or you do seven times four. Same thing. Um, what you did is it was fine because you're, you're divided by the coefficient of x. But when you divide by a fraction, then you got multiplied by its reciprocal. Or just multiply by four. Same thing. Same thing. Yep. You get 28. All right. Um, I gather. Did you guys learn about factoring in algebra one in middle school or if you took it here as a freshman? Okay. Okay. Well, don't worry about it because we'll cover it down the road. <laughs> Actually, that'll be the last thing that'll be the last thing I teach you guys before I go and leave as, as factoring. But this is a ready factor. Don't foil, that's a waste of time. Yeah. Just do the x method. So, so you, you do this. Oh, well, this. Actually, the x method is already done for you. Then I was going to say, in this case, it's like. It's not x I'll explain later. It's, it's a factoring process. Foil is, a, uh, to, um, is the opposite of the factor. Uh, That's most of Okay. Why am I doing this? This is called the zero product property. Anything times zero we know is. Zero. You have two things being multiplied here. You got x plus two. Let me write this as a text box. We have x plus two times two x minus one. And the result is zero. So either x plus two equals zero or two x minus one. You don't have to write all this out, but I just wanna just emphasize what's happening here. Yeah, so this is what this means, right? You have two sets of parentheses, so these are being multiplied. One of those two things has to be zero for this to work. 
Yeah. Now it becomes two simple linear equations. Which, what, are, what, are your, what are your answers going to be? Or, or what else? Yep, got it. You get A2 or you get one half. Exactly, right. Okay. Um, almost done here. Any questions? Nope. Um, here's um, another one. Ooh, that's, that wait. Absolutely Hold on a sec. Oh, wait. oh. Yeah, I'm confused too. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. No, no, hold on. I don't bring trigonometry. Um, you can't solve for n. Well, you do the thing. You um, try to right yeah. right right make the right triangle. Right 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 that's right geometry. That's not trig, bro. Oh, there's trigonometry. Yeah, trigonometry. You know? Yeah, it's 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 cosine. Okay. No, no, no. It's none of that stuff, guys. Okay. Um. Yeah, this, 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 this problem's lame because it's missing some of Um, uh, What would have been a good problem is it gave you the actual direct diagonal that you're going to solve for. That would be a good problem. In this case, if you know that um, one size 4n, the other size also 4n, and one size n plus 2, the other size also n plus 12. So you just do 4n plus 4n plus n plus 12. If you work all of it out, you should get 10n plus 24. Now, if I actually gave you a numerical value of the trend or a few salt run, if I say the point 60, you get x equals 60 salt run. But obviously, this problem didn't happen. So um, that was kind of lame. I should actually check this a little more carefully before I print them. OK. Um, let's keep moving. All right, this part is not is not terribly fun. This this part uh, now is anyone taking chemistry right now? I okay, most of you guys. You will have to just okay because they have the junior in here. Right? Well, well, hold on a sec. I I thought I hated chemistry when I was a junior. Then I took AP Chem. Then I took general chemistry in college, and then I switched my major to chemical engineering and loved it. So you never know. You never, never, you never know. Chemistry, <laughs> science and math don't go well together. They do, they do go well together. Are you kidding me? I know. But like, like okay. Algebra. Well, here's I'm like, I'm okay. Like, I don't, I so let's look at this problem here first. Okay. Let's back up a little bit, guys. Um, That's just like, it, so there's, there's something here called the dimensional analysis. So you guys are going to be doing quite a lot. We're doing the podcast quite fancy. So chemistry, you guys, like, have like grams and you have like liters and you have like all the things you measure, you have to convert units. So that's what's happening here. Like apparently you have 10 yards per minute and 20 for the feet per minute. Now this is actually is so practical because I'm sure some of you guys have traveled internationally, I assume, right? Okay, do other countries use miles per hour? No. What do they use instead? Oh, or if you go to a gas station, you ever pump gas, you use gallons or dollars per gallon, you use their monetary value per liter. We're kind of special here. We feel like we don't have to call the rest of you. So, but here's the question. What is 30 miles per hour in feet per second? So 30 miles per hour, I can fathom what that is. Like someone's driving down Paul Carrizo. Some people go faster. We should be going about 30 miles per hour, right? Um, by the way, um, if you guys ever get speeding tickets, talk to me. I'm kind of an expert at beating tickets. So anyway, <laughs> that's a little fun side note. But I mean, you could do this if you want to. If You, you could always cheat and say, Hey, 30 miles per hour converted to feet per second. I did not have this one out because I went to school in the 90s when there was no internet. And there you go. You get the answer pretty quickly, right? I know the answer is 44. However, we're going to actually work out by hand. You can totally just Google this stuff, right? So let's back up a little bit and let, let me show you how you would actually do this by hand. Um, in, the say, in the interest of time, I won't do all three of these examples. I think if I do one, you guys get the point. And it's not a terribly important skill for this class as being concerned, but it is important for chemistry. 
So I feel like as a math teacher, I should at least have gone over this once and give you a little practice and homework just so you have the, um, so you're prepared for chemistry. So 30 miles per hour, I'm gonna do it down here, the new space. 30 miles, one hour. Pretty obvious what that means. If you're on the road for one hour, you cover 30 miles. I hope you never drive 30 miles per hour consistently for one hour. That's really awful. Usually if you drive long roads, you want to go 60, 70 miles per hour. But 30 miles, one hour, right? Okay, how do you how do you convert this? So let's think about it. Let's take care of time first. How many minutes are in, are in an hour? Great. So one hour is 60 minutes. Why am I writing it like this? What's going to happen to the hours units here? The way they're set up right now. They're going to cancel out maybe with miles per minute. So I, I could just stop right here and I get the conversion of miles per minute, which actually should be a lower number because in one minute I travel maybe half a minute, right? Yeah. Okay, let's keep moving. How many minutes are in a second? 60 again, right? I messed up. Let's, let me repeat. Sorry. No wonder you guys are confused. My third mistake today. Okay. Why do we minutes units now? Why do we minutes units now? They cancel again, right? So what's happening is this chain reaction where the hours got converted to minutes. The minutes get converted to seconds. So if I were to stop right here, this is going to be how many miles I travel in one second. Because how many seconds are in one hour? There is no time. You are multiplied out. So the last step would be this. Now, I don't expect you guys to know this off the top of your head, but you're told right here in the problem, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. One mile is 5,280 feet. But we need 30 miles. Yes. See these cancel? Shannon, go, Shannon right? Yeah. Oh, um, so... Great question. I kind of glossed over this. I can see the computer. This fraction right here, these are equivalent numbers. One hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. One minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So what's happening is when I multiply this quantity by this fraction, it doesn't change this, this value. It just expresses it as this different value. So, um, but the other reason why I do this for the trees, I don't want these units to cancel so that I have miles and minutes. But then I'm not done there because the app is asking for feet per second. So then what I did next step, here I have minutes, right? And then it's not here so that these cancel, but one minute is equal to what feet per seconds? 60 seconds. And one, one minute or 60 seconds, this whole fraction is really just one. It's like you're multiplying this fraction by one more one, one. Each of these, just so you know, yeah, this is the part that um I'm kind of glossing over. Hopefully this will... Hope you guys make sense of all this. Actually, I don't think I've ever taught this way. Maybe this maybe this might be groundbreaking. Maybe I should like sell this idea. I don't know. See this idea makes sense. What happens if you multiply something by one? What's the answer? Here? The same thing. This is all that's all you're doing. You're multiplying this by one three times. Just think about it. Does one hour equal 60 minutes? Yeah. Does one equal six seconds? Yeah. Does five thousand twenty eight feet equal one mile? Trust me. Yeah. It equals one. So really, you're not changing the speed. It's not going faster or slower. It's the same speed. It's just that you're expressing it in different units. You're converting the units. That's all we're doing. And why do I set up this way? So that cancel, cancel, and then cancel. And what am I stuck with? Feet and seconds. But you got you to compute all this. So you got to do 30 times 5,280 over 60 times 60. And you punch in the calculator and spits out a number. And I will use my calculator here. So 30 
And uh, I do apologize. We're not going to have a chance to do homework today. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go light on the homework, just so you know. I'll go very, very light. I um, kind of over uh, underestimated how much we're covering today. Well, look at that. I got 44. I got to go to Google stuff. Yo. So we, got the last one. we do get 44. And that's feet per second. So if you see a car, actually, this is kind of a car. Does anyone drive right now or is going to be in the permits? You know, tomorrow? Are you going to take your test tomorrow? Okay, well, good, well, good luck. Um, actually, I had to take a written test because I had too many tickets on my record. So they forced me to. I passed. But I got really nervous because, you know, yeah, you got to. But the reason why I asked this question um, when you drive, right, you got to break too, right? And when you break, you know, it usually takes a couple seconds for the car to slow down. You're still traveling a good hundred feet, so don't fall too closely, especially when the roads are wet. So that's kind of a little aside there. But anyway, uh, questions on the calculation? Questions on how I got this number? Okay, you, you guys will have a chance to practice. We could we can come back to it on Monday, but um, let's, let's let's move on to one more topic. We got like, ten minutes left. I'm not I'm I'm not going to do the other two problems. So we'll just move to the next, and then we'll be done. And then I do have the homework packets. And again, I apologize. I didn't give you a chance to do homework today. I thought we would. But it's okay. You guys, I'll, I'll make sure it's only about a half. It's not no more than 20 to 30 minutes of practice. Um, okay. Last last one. Rewriting formulas and equations. So again, you're isolating a variable. You're isolating a variable. So here you want to solve for f, here you want to solve for y, here we want to solve for b, here we want to solve for y. Let's do the first one here. So your goal, and let me highlight as well. Okay, this is our goal, is to isolate these letters. We'll start with the first one. I want to do the f by itself. What should I do to get the f by itself? Times everything by four. You could do that. We could do that step also. But that that that, that would work. That's something wrong with that. I would probably do that first. The only reason why I'm hesitant to do what you said at the rate. Yeah. The reason I'm hesitant to um, do that is that I because I've created this stuff many times. I see students do that and they forget to multiply everything by four. But the multiply this by four, we have to multiply that one. Don't forget to multiply that. So that's my only hesitation. I don't. I, I want to minimize um, risk. Risk, yes, exactly. So I'm gonna minimize the risk, right? Like in the in the finance world, you try to minimize the risk, right? So I would subtract d over two from both sides. Let me write that nice, more nicely. So now I get this. I get f over four equals six minus d over two. Now I'm just one step away. What's my final step? Multiply by four. Of course, you got to multiply everything by four on the other side. So I mean, you still can make a mistake, obviously. And if I do that, got it, good work. 24 minus 2d. Now, why do we care about this? Because we're going to have to solve a system of equations in Chapter 3. We're going to have to isolate variables and substitute. We're going to have to be able to do that as a skill. And this is a skill that we need for future problems. So um, this is why we're doing it, because we're giving you guys all these building blocks for more advanced problems down the road. So that's 24 minus 2D. Um, questions on that one on the upper left? We're good? All right. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep the train moving. All right, you guys are doing great today. I'm almost there for lunchtime. Okay, this one. What should I do as my first step? Subtract the 2x. I totally agree. Then, I would have 
divided everything by five at the start, but I don't know for you could again. You just gotta be really. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You could. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I wouldn't fault you for that. Um, it just um, could get a little more messy when we have fractions involved right away. Yeah. And a negative five. And then, oops, sorry. Then you gotta divide everything by negative five. So final answer is y equals five minus two x over negative five. And by the way, you could have uh, broken that down a little further if you wanted to. You could have done five over negative five, negative two x over negative five. You probably would have had that as your answer. You probably have yeah, that I negative one negative plus two x over five. And that would be fine. Yeah. yeah, you also could have had this too. Yeah, add y equals negative one plus two plus x. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Um, actually. That is kind of nice because that's actually a line with a slope and a y-intercept, which yeah. we're going to talk about next week. Because we're going to have to isolate variables for um, salt graphing equations. All right, let's keep moving. Um, I think you guys kind of get the point. So we'll just cross off these two problems. Uh, I think we'll just use the last two, then we'll stop there. And I'll give you guys just a couple minutes to kind of clear your head before you have lunch. Um, all right, well, why don't you guys try this on your own? Tell me what you guys get. So solve for B here and solve for Y here. Go ahead and try those on your own. We'll check in about one minute from now right. or two I minutes from now. Check answers. Okay. All right, let me pass up the homeworks. And I'll tell you what the homework's going to be. All right. Um, hold on a second, Alex. No. Don't get too comfortable. Yeah. Um, all right, so really quickly, you can subtract 12c and then divide by 5. Or for this one, we can move the x and half to the other side and then multiply both sides by 4. There you go. Okay. So everything we did today, you guys know it's here. Uh, um, yeah, the right here. Mm -hmm. and here and like, and like, the It'll be a key also. Yep. All right, thank you. Yep. No, I always put keys up. Do you on Monday? Right. Yep.
Get to wear a mask in your class? Yeah, she's like, I don't want to catch COVID. Nobody wants to catch COVID. I got COVID. I got the early summer, but I'm back. We're all going to get COVID. Two years ago. Yeah, I mean, two years ago, I was worried like, if I gave it to someone elderly and they, and they died from it. Two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. You're already ruining everybody's day by making us. We don't know what's happening. 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 We don't know what's happening